Hey guys, it's the Faceless Beanie and welcome to my easy railjack guide. I'll be trying to explain the essentials of the whole railjack system so that you can hopefully have an easier time with it. Let's get right into it. First up, you'll need to go to your clan's dry dock and initiate the quest Rising Tides, which is the quest to build your railjack. Keep in mind you don't require your own railjack to play. You can simply click the railjack icon in navigation and board other players' railjacks and join them on missions. However, the fun is in having your own. These are the resources you'll need to complete Rising Tide for each part of the Railjack. Keep in mind, most of these resources can easily be farmed from Railjack itself, so playing with other players for a while may not be such a bad idea. Each part will take 6 hours to build and cannot be hastened with Platinum. Once you're done building your Railjack, you'll have access to the configuration and research panels. Let's go through configuration. First up, Components. These are the parts that make up your railjack. Shields, as the name suggests, provide shields for your railjack. Engines affect the movement speed of your railjack. And reactors provide you with extra avionics capacity and flux capacity, both of which will be explained later on. By default, the basic Sigma versions of these components are equipped. You can find better components by downing enemies and completing missions. These will be added to your wreckage. You can then repair them at a cost of a lot of resources and equip them. Next, armaments. These are the weapons of your railjack. A turret is mounted on the pilot's side, controlled by the pilot of the railjack, and turrets mounted on the sides which can be controlled by other players on your railjack. The final weapon is an ordnance, a strong low ammunition weapon that deals high damage. Ordnance ammo is shared among all players. Similarly to components, armaments can also be found in missions. This is where research comes in. You can research stronger armaments and components at a relatively low cost. It's recommended to save up for MK3 versions as the others aren't really worth it. Eventually, however, components and armaments found from missions are going to be much better than those you can research, so you'd want to save up for them instead. Let's move on to avionics. These are the mods for your railjack and the most essential part of all. Avionics are split into three categories. Integrated avionics boost your railjack stats. For example, Bulkhead boosts the hull of your railjack, similar to how Vitality buffs the health of a Warframe. Then there's Battle Avionics. These are avionics which assist you in damaging your enemies. Some Battle Avionics are locked to a certain slot. For example, Munitions Vortex can only be equipped in the first slot, while Particle Ram can only be equipped in the second slot. Finally, Tactical Avionics. These are special abilities which give you an edge in battle, whether it be a momentary cloak or a decreased forge cooldown. Avionics and the grids they are placed in can both be upgraded using directs. These are rare resources you can obtain from completing missions. It's advisable to upgrade grids first, as you may not get the best version of the avionic you want till later in the game. Additional directs can be obtained by scrapping excess avionics as well as armaments and components. Let's move on to intrinsics. This is Railjack Affinity. Intrinsics are earned like affinity and you split them by 4 segments. Tactical buffs tactical avionics as well as grants you special abilities to interact with the tactical menu. It's recommended to reach rank 4 which will provide you the ability to teleport back to your railjack from wherever you may be on the map. Piloting, as the name suggests, relates to assisting your piloting abilities. Rank 1 allows you to use boost to move quicker, while rank 2 allows you to use a directional thruster to thrust your railjack a few hundred meters in one direction. Gunnery helps with your turrets and your arc wing. Rank 2 is necessary here, it provides you with a 360 degree view from the side turrets. Rank 3 unlocks the slingshot at the top of your ship, which allows you to thrust yourself a couple thousand meters in your arc wing instead of exiting and flying manually all the way. Rank 5 unlocks forward artillery, a powerful one-shot cannon which makes light work of high-level enemies.
Engineering relates to forge management and repairs. With engineering, the higher the rank, the better. Every rank from rank 1 to rank 10 gives you a considerable buff. Aim for rank 2 initially and go from there. Intrinsics apply to your character, not your railjack. You'll be able to utilize abilities granted by your intrinsics no matter whose railjack you're on. Any intrinsic abilities improving your arcing will also apply to the planes of Eidolon and Fortuna. The payload is related to your forge, which will be explained shortly. All you gotta know for this is to ensure all these are fully loaded before you embark on a mission. Let's get into the railjack. At the front is where you'll pilot it and shoot turrets. Right behind is the forward artillery, unlocked at rank 5 gunnery, which fires a powerful shot consuming dome charges. Over here are the side turrets. Two separate players can control either side simultaneously. In the middle, you'll have access to the upper and lower floor of your railjack. The upper floor is where you'll find the slingshot, unlocked at rank 3 gunnery. On the lower floor at the back end of the ship, you'll find your forge. You'll be able to recharge all elements of your payload here. Revolite is used to repair damages using the Omni tool in your gear. Flux is for battle and tactical avionics. Munitions is ordnance ammo. And dome charges are forward artillery ammo. You only need the four resources shown to use the forge. Do not hit refine as it will send all resources to your inventory, effectively making your forge useless until you acquire new ones from the mission. Every time the forge is used to recharge an item, the forge has to cool down before it can be used again. Essentially, there are four roles to be fulfilled. The first is the pilot, who will maneuver the railjack, pick up resources, and battle enemies. Second, the gunner, who helps with battling enemies. Third, the engineer, the most important role. The engineer has to carry out repairs, manage the forge, and fend off intruders. There's five types of damages which will have to be repaired. Each will be performed using the Omni tool which is automatically equipped in your gear. Electrical damage reduces max shields. Fire deals persistent damage to your hull. Frost will lock doors. Regular hull breaches will reduce your max hull. And finally, catastrophic hull breaches will blow up your railjack. If there's too much damage going on, it's more important to repair the regular hull breaches to prevent your hull from getting too low. If a catastrophic hull breach occurs, you have a minute to repair it before your ship goes boom. Repairing it around the 20 second mark gives you ideal time to micromanage. Repairing a catastrophic hull breach provides you temporary invincibility and will replenish your shields and hull. The final fourth squad member usually embarks on his arc wing and completes mission objectives. If required, this member can assist the engineer in fighting off intruders and carrying out repairs. Hitting L on your keyboard brings up the tactical menu. This is where you'll access your tactical avionics. If you have rank 2 on tactical intrinsics, you'll be able to use a warframe ability of any 4 squad members anywhere on the ship via the minimap. And rank 3 will allow you to teleport to parts of the ship via the minimap. Let's move on to Railjack missions. Railjack missions essentially involve the core objectives of defeating enemy fighters and destroying cruise ships. Cruise ships will appear as you eliminate enemy fighters. You can destroy cruise ships by boarding them and destroying the reactor or you can use forward artillery, provided you have gunnery rank 5. Alternatively, you can eliminate enemies within the cruise ship and take control of it to assist in battle. Additional objectives on harder missions will have a point of interest somewhere on the map, requiring you to disable reactors at a Grenier outpost or to eliminate a Grenier commander, both which must be done by physically boarding the points of interest. I'll end with a quick tip for starters. Your railjack will be fairly crap when you start out. It's a better idea to park at this Orokin Tower on Earth missions. Then, kill a few fighters with your railjack and wait for a cruise ship to appear. Hijack the cruise ship and use it to complete the mission. Once the other cruise ship appears, destroy the current one and repeat. Once the mission is complete, drive your railjack around and destroy all the asteroids to collect loot. And that's about it. 
It's impossible to cover the more complex parts such as picking weapons or avionics in detail in this guide as it's meant for beginners to get started. With that, I hope this helped you out. This is the Faceless Beanie, signing out.